Hey everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be analyzing the current offensive that's going on past Avdivka. I made a video like this about the one in Shasi Vyar, so I thought I'd do one for the two major areas that Russia's progressing right now. Everything inside of the green is the area that Russia captured in February, the yellow is March, and the red is April so far. You can see the overall progress has slowed down a little bit, but Ukraine was able to stiffen their defenses after the retreat from Avdivka. First, let's just take a look at where the main Ukrainian fortifications in this area are. Russia actually hasn't pushed up to the main fortification line yet, which runs through Novo Kadlinove, through Novo Bakhmutovka, and just along this river, sort of, until it reaches this little lake. Ukraine has been trying to hold on to Semenivka and Berdichi for as long as possible just to let um, more of these lines be prepared. You can see recently, this is just in the past two days, that Russia has pushed up more towards this rail junction here. If we go ahead a little bit more south, you can see where the long-term defense line for this area is just based on the geography. It goes through this lake and then snakes around this river right by these hills right here, which would give the Ukrainians good firing positions. Right now, this area isn't too much to worry about because the Ukrainians have been holding in Krasnohorivka since the start of the war even though russia has made some small gains south of the settlement i just looked at the news and ukraine has retreated to the industrial part of krasnohorivka this i'm not sure how critical this is because i'm not too familiar with this part of the front but if ukraine is able to stay in this industrial area and protect it from there that should be able to hold the russians for long enough that is unless they use these 1500 kilogram bombs i'm going to talk about in a second to destroy most of it the only real way that krasnohorovka could be threatened within the next month or so is if a breakthrough occurs around Paravomysk and the russians push down through this way the russian success in avdivka was highly due to their use of fab 1500 bombs these are a new kind of repurposing of old soviet weapons which are basically dumb bombs which electronic warfare systems don't work on and they equip them with glide kits to allow them to sort of act as a guided missile these have been causing a lot of problems for the ukrainians because in order to defend against them you need a good air defense network as well as an aerial fighting force to basically stop the planes from getting close enough to deploy them in some ways this is the russian equivalent to ukrainian fpv drones because they're easy to mass produce and hard to counter the main problem with long term using these is that the way the Russians would use them is to blow up the fortifications in their way. Let's say for a second, Ukraine has a big trench behind Semenivka. If the Russians slowly blow it up and break it apart, when they go in to capture the territory, they're going to have to rebuild or reestablish the fortifications. As we've seen with Marienka, there's not a whole ton of purpose capturing a town when you use explosives to turn that town back into a field. And so either that means the Russians are going to have to slow their rated advance to reestablish the fortifications, or they leave themselves way more vulnerable to Ukrainian counterattacks because if they push too far in a specific area and there's no fortifications to fall back on if the ukrainians get good momentum they can probably wipe them back to where the fortifications are overall this is definitely going to lead to more russian progress these bombs are currently a game changer it's going to take a couple more months to truly assess how they work and if these long-term issues do occur but for right now i'd estimate that we'd see probably a faster pace of advance around chassis vyar and Avdivka. but with this current front line where is ukraine holding defense we'll start up north by berdichi and we'll turn on the satellite map and just kind of move around up north, the main area that Ukraine's been using for defense is this little junction right here. Moving a little more down, it's likely that there are some trenches or uh, some fortifications inside of the tree lines which they're using to hold the Russians here. And Berdichi is the main settlement that's preventing Russian advances up north. It's not a very big settlement, but they've been holding them at this main road in the middle for a while. The small river and lakes through there also make it a little bit easier to defend. The whole way down, defense is sort of anchored along this river, which is hidden in some of the trees. But having a river in the way would prevent large crossings of Russian armored vehicles until a bridge is established. You can see that down to Semenivka, there is a bridge, except it's actually, it's a bridge created by Mother Nature. So the Russians have established a small foothold beyond here, but hasn't broken the road yet. Heading south, Orlivka is kind of contained by these lakes on the sides, and that makes it a little bit easier to defend. The Russians have taken over most of the settlement, but the Ukrainians still hold this junction area in between where the two roads meet. Actually, I'm lying. They have. I looked at the map. It's this junction which they still control. That's my fault. And like I said earlier, this little lake right here creates a nice funnel to contain the advance. Moving south from there, there's also a couple rivers. You can tell, unlike Chassis Vyar, there's not a lot of big defensive uh, structures to use in the geography, so it's mostly down to fortifications that we can't see on the satellite map. If I switch back to this map, you can see that there's sort of a pocket that's created by the Karovaske Reservoir. I think at least for the southern half of this, it's Ukraine's goal to try to contain the Russians inside of this little pocket right here. There's good geography with a river going through here, another smaller river, and some hills. And the longer the Ukrainians can hold them there, the more they'll be able to establish fortifications by Novoselivka, Persia, and other places. With Russia's new glide bomb approach, I think it's inevitable that they will reach this next fortification line. But I think the first place to break will probably be uh, this northern area by Berdichi. It's an unfortunate reality that Russian progress is probably inevitable now, just with this new strategy in the last 
lack of ammunition that Ukraine has. And it seems like Mike Johnson may be trying to split the current Ukraine aid bill, which is even more frustrating. He wants to split it into Israel and Ukraine because people are worried that if he passes the... Or no. He wants to split it into Israel and Ukraine and separate them because there are people saying that if he passes the Ukraine aid bill, they'll oust him from office. If this makes you as angry as it makes me, you should listen to the diss track that I just uploaded on him yesterday. I'm still waiting for his response. He's been real quiet. A little bit of an area which I don't think gets a whole ton of attention is uh, Pervomysk. This settlement was holding for a long time, I think since November 2022 or around the time that Pisky fell. Just recently, the Russians have captured this and the Ukrainians are still holding out in the main uh, center of the settlement. I think a big breakthrough this direction is unlikely, mostly because of this current area that's still holding out in Pervomysk, as well as this long river stretch and the fact that the Ukrainians have good defense around Nevelske. I think if the Russians progress here, it'll probably be up to this river or so. And then Nevelske is the direction which hasn't moved for a whole while. The Russians captured this segment of land throughout the course of March, but Ukraine still has good control over the settlement. And that's really most of the moving pieces of what's going on around Avdivka right now. It's going to be interesting to see how much more Russia captures by the end of April. If I had to guess anywhere where the next progress would be, it'd probably be up here by Bergici, but hopefully the rest of the line is able to hold and the Ukrainians can deal with the FAB bombs that are being put out now. That's all I've got for you guys today, and I better have been recording. Thank God. Okay, that scared me. Yep, that's all I've got, and I'll see you later. Bye.